welcome back to the channel thank you so much for those of you that have reached out with comments and let me know how you'd have enjoyed uh, watching the videos we've posted so far we've got 61 subscribers now on uh, on youtube um, and we're getting about 130 140 views of our, our video so it's great that you're interested in watching us as we go through the journey on our extensions and renovations down here in dorset um, so quite a bit happened here on site since we last posted it's stopped raining so we've managed to actually get things done um, as you can see behind me I'm actually stood in the workshop at the back of my garage which is fantastic um, we've got the walls on this side of the house up to the damp proof course layer and we've had the first uh, layer of cement um, into uh, the garage and the uh, laundry gym uh, space just to my uh, right uh, so the garage floor construction in here will be adding 100mm of Celotex insulation and then a reinforced garage floor. Um, still looking at putting the underfloor heating out here. I'm not sure it's going to justify the cost of doing that. And that, that brings me on to a really interesting point of a number of decisions that we've had to make through this build around materials for insulation uh, in particular of the property and how we heat it. Uh, and I did a lot of work in my professional career to help customers look at uh, total cost of ownership of IT systems that they were buying, the return on the investment, the benefits to their business, these sorts of things. So I've had quite a bit of experience of that and I've been trying to apply that to where we spend our money on the build. Now we're all being forced to be more efficient in how we extend our homes and build new homes. The building regulations have changed recently, so build, new building regulations part L that came in last year are forcing us to fit more insulation under the floor, in the walls, with the windows, different heating systems, ventilation, etc. Um, so when we spoke to the architect at the beginning of this build, we said we, within sensible reasons and, and values, we wanted to exceed what we were being asked to do in Partel. Um, obviously, we're starting with a 50-year-old uh, bungalow with a cavity wall that's got a little bit of, uh, of uh, fiberglass blown into it. Um, that and, and, and the way that we measure these is, is U-value, so levels of insulation or heat loss uh, through the building. Um, so the original building, I think, from what I've worked out, is around 0.25 uh, U in insulation. And the regulations for what we would have to build now are around 0.18. Um, we said we wanted to exceed that and originally specified 100 milli 150 millimeter cavity with 140 millimeter of insulation so previously houses often only had 50 mil so that's you know almost three times as much insulation um, with the supply chain challenges that we had the builder came back to us at Christmas and said it's going to be really expensive I can't even get enough sheets of that material so we dropped uh, back our original specification that we were getting to was 0.13 now I know this is a very dry subject um, uh, and we'd had to drop that back to, to 0.17 but when we looked at it again recently some of the supply chain issues had eased um, that material was now available but it's quite a bit more expensive um, for the property so you know around 2,000 pounds more for the 140 mil than 100 mil uh, Celotex the builder was going to install so you know I did a lot of calculations try to work out I asked people and they said well your boiler will be on longer Okay, is the house going to feel more comfortable? Would it generally be better to have an air source heat pump or would we need that for an air source heat pump? And no, nobody could really come up with firm answers for me. Um, so I played around a little bit with ChatGPT. Now, you know, we've heard a lot about that recently. I decided to you know, go into that. I was really surprised how simple it was to work with ChatGPT iteratively tell it the size of my building, how it's constructed now, the different wall constructions that I was considering, and it calculated and showed me how to calculate uh, the potential cost savings of those different U values. Um, so that came down to something like um, <clears throat> something like £100 a year uh, savings on gas at 10 pence per unit um, if we went for the £2,000 of better insulation. So, yeah, it's quite a long return on investment you know of 20 years potentially um, but the house will be more comfortable if I'm not heating the garage having a better insulated wall in the garage will make it more comfortable to to be out here so we've decided to go for that level of insulation at 140 millimeters um, we're also going through now still looking at refining the windows you know windows we had quotes anywhere from 25,000 to nearly 70,000 uh, pounds ranging from a double glazed UPVC 
through to a triple glazed um, uh, wooden framed aluminium capped and faced windows some beautifully made windows but a <laughs> big difference um, and the u values there were varying from sort of uh, 1.8 so a lot higher for glass um, down to about 0.5 so you know a big difference but not not two thousand pounds forty thousand pounds difference so i'm never going to see the return on that investment they're a nicer window they're a better window um, so we're, we're still going through that decision now of, of where we land um, so we're going to have a probably have to have an aluminium uh, window for the large open plan room we've got the other end of the house but we're looking at choices and styles for uh, other windows so pretty dry subject but you know we've been spending a lot of time on it didn't realize how complex it was going to be to work all of that out and, and get decent advice on it um, the other things that we're looking at trying to firm up is things around mechanical ventilation and heat recovery um, so this is something I really do want to install the ventilation in the original bungalow was pretty non-existent so we've had problems with condensation damp and mold because there are no vents in the bathrooms or the kitchens um, there are no trickle vents in the windows many of the windows don't open so we're, we're trying to fix all of that but uh, we would need to have had extractor vents in five locations so three bathrooms a kitchen and a utility room area um, so what we're going to do with the mechanical ventilation heat recovery is take all of the warm moist air from those locations it gets sucked back into a central heat exchanger unit so that hot air goes through a heat exchanger we bring fresh cold air from outside that we can filter from traffic pollution from pollen filter uh, pollen and those sorts of things and we uh, return we, exchange around 90% of the heat of the energy for the air that we're blowing out and blow that back into the um, other rooms so bedrooms living room those sorts of things so we've got the specifications for that system hoping to work with a company where I can install that myself um, and but they will come out and commission it and give a certification that we can give to building control because that will mean we don't have to have trickle vents um, in the windows and doors that are installed um, so you know we're not trying to make the building airtight because we've got an old shell in the middle but trying to do the best that we can for those levels of energy efficiency um, so i'll come back with you to you on uh, the decisions that we made in that space um, other things that i'm trying to firm out now is the home automation uh, some of you know me you know that i've been dabbling with various home automation for the last 20 years um, and, and quite good success with how some of that worked but you know we've got an opportunity here where we're going to have to rewire the house uh, completely uh, so have the opportunity to put in a more professional um, system uh, all centrally wired back into a control cabinet where we've got full integration between present sensing lighting control heating control security uh, potentially energy control the solar and the battery and those sorts of things so really interested and I'll do a deep dive on the technologies that we're looking at and why we've chosen it um, on, a, on another session that I'm sure some of you will be uh, interested in so thank you very much for coming back and watching yeah, it's been really great for us to get the feedback and comments um, from many of you that have watched the channel um, I'd love to add comments and questions please if you have them underneath if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may not have a YouTube account, you know, create a YouTube account and subscribe and you'll get notified when we make new posts. Um, I've got a bunch of time-lapse photography from some of the footwork and block work, uh, footings and block work that was done. I'll put that on just with some background music if you're interested in watching that. So thank you very much for coming back. Great to, uh, to see that you're all so interested in the, uh, the work that we're doing down here in Dorset. Thank you very much.